today and just remind you that we are very actively making sure that we are providing information for everyone as the condition and situation in the mortgage industry continues to evolve. So with that, we have Mr. Dave Luna tomorrow morning. He will be joining us at 11 as he is committed to doing every Tuesday at 11 this month. And um, if you haven't up to your membership in camp, please do it now. It is renewal time. And um, at the end of this week, we're still putting the details together. We're going to do in a webinar on how to handle your tenants um, and the proper responses for the input you're getting for your tenants right now um, for you or your investor clients. So with that, I'll keep it short because we definitely want to hear from Barry and thank you again for everything, guys. So let's start it off, Barry, with some questions. I know David wanted to ask about inflation. So let's start there. All right. So hi, everybody. It's really good to be here with, uh, with so many friends from camp. It's great that you guys are on. And I know that these are crazy times. So uh, first, I just want to say I hope and wish that all of you and your families are safe and healthy and, uh, and doing well. Uh, you probably have a lot of a lot of questions that you're hearing from your real estate agents, a lot of questions from your customers, some things that don't make sense where, whether it's pricing or programs or all that stuff. So, you know, we've made some strides, we made some progress. Uh, as many of you know, I was able to get the Fed to stop the maniacal buying of mortgage backed securities. They thought they were doing well, but uh, they were putting lenders in a position of uh, having these enormous margin calls. And so many were calling me saying, I don't know if I can make it another week. So. We we're blessed and fortunate that we got the Fed to hear us. And um, it took that article that we had written and thanks to all of your help and people like John Walden and Steve Leisman and Peter Bookvar and some former Fed members like Daniel DiMartino and Lacey Hunt, we got in front of the Fed and uh, they stopped that. But we, as you know, we've got a lot of other issues to deal with too in the mortgage business with this forbearance situation, first payment default, and we're still working through that. And as I just mentioned, I'm gonna be getting on the phone with Chris Whale. And you probably saw the article that Chris Whalen wrote, it's gone around, uh, was, was very, very um, scathing towards um, Calabria and the FHFA, actually called for Mark Calabria's removal uh, as head of the FHFA. Um, and listen, I can understand that, but we really have to try and get the message to them that you know, we don't want this to be a situation like to use a, maybe a, a poor analogy, but it's the best that I could think of. And that is when you have uh, a, a bad intersection um, and you know it's a bad intersection, it'd probably be better to put a traffic light up before there's accidents and, and, and unfortunate circumstances that occur. But we know what happens. They wait for some unfortunate circumstances to occur and they say, oh, okay, well now we'll put a traffic light up. Uh, that sounds a lot to me like what Mark Calabria is waiting for so let's hope and let's pray that it doesn't get to that, but it is difficult, especially with the abuses on forbearance. And you know, what Megan will show you today is great ways that we could help and ways that you could be a leader in this marketplace. So I know the question that you asked me was about inflation. So let's start there because so many people are saying, hey, uh, as far as debt goes, we've got so much debt we're taking on, will that cause inflation? All this money that's, that's out there, will it cause inflation? And interestingly enough, the answer is no that will not cause inflation. It actually, very interestingly enough, has the opposite effect. It's very repressive towards inflation because higher debt levels, it's analogous to a family that's got so much debt that their debt service doesn't allow them any discretionary spending. And then it speaks to something called velocity of money. So velocity of money is very critical for an economy to grow at a rapid pace. All this debt, what it will do is it's an overhang for us, for our kids, for our grandkids, because this debt has to be repaid. And the, first, and the Fed is gonna be first in line, by the way. Uh, I know one of the things we're gonna be doing is we're gonna get Lacey Hunt, who is like the authority on this stuff, he used to be at the Fed, and we're gonna get Lacey on a call. We had him on once before. Uh, really, really, really super interesting and educational, one of my mentors. Uh, so we're gonna get him on next week. So make sure you tune into that. I think that'll be very meaningful. As far as what could cause inflation? Well, the thing that, that's interesting is that you bring this up just at a time where something interesting happened, and that is the Bank of England, um, they crossed the Rubicon. They started printing money. And that was very troubling to me. You know, I, I, Megan, I spoke to you over the weekend when, when that happened, and I told you that I was very bothered by this because 
when central banks start printing money, that is what has led to throughout history towards hyperinflation. So we're not there yet in the United States. The fact that we have a balancing ledger, like we have a debt, but we owe the debt. You know, we have QE, but it's on a balance sheet. You know, we raise money, but we're issuing treasury bonds or bills or notes, and we have to make payments on those to investors. So there's a counterbalance. But what the Bank of England essentially did is says, here, here's a credit card, spend all you want, don't have to pay it back and no monthly debt service. This is very dangerous because that actually pushes more money into the system. And when you have more dollars chasing too few products, if there's not a corresponding demand there, then what you're going to see is you're going to see inflation start to come back. Now, it bothered me because this was the very first step of a major country doing this in modern time. You know, unless you want to call the bank, you know, what happened in Rhodesia, Zimbabwe, you know, back in the early 1990s, but that wasn't a major country that did that. But it was still, I'm sure everybody's seen the $100 trillion bill that they had to produce in Zimbabwe. But if you look at history, this is a, this is a bad thing that would happen. It would wipe out savers. It would wipe out anyone's wealth. It would be horrible, horrible, horrible. The only things that would hold up would be gold and real estate. Uh, so listen, gold's probably a good good holding just in case, especially with what's going on. But I think that you know we need to pay close attention to this story because it becomes intoxicating. Imagine having all this debt and all these problems, and then you just say, "Well, I'll just print the money." You know, just you have this magic credit card. You know, maybe at first I'll just use it a little, but wow, that was pretty easy. Maybe I'll just use it a little bit more. And then do other countries like Japan would be a natural one, right? Do they now say, "Well, Bank of England's doing it"? Maybe Bank of Japan decides to do it. And that's where it starts to get dicey, team. So we're watching it closely. Uh, not saying this to scare anybody, but I do think that it bears watching. And uh, we like to get out ahead of things. You know, we're, we've been ahead of things most of the time. And this is just something that we're watching and we're hoping that it doesn't go too far. Now, getting back to where we are in the mortgage industry, um, we are hopeful that this forbearance issue, and again, we've got scripts on this as to what to say. Um, in Social Studio, Megan's going to show you how to do that. Megan's going to show you how to take a look at these opportunities. And that's, that's what I want to talk to you about, because while we have some landmines around us, there's a lot of opportunity. So assuming we don't start printing money, and I pray we don't, we will see low rates for a long time, very low rates. Now, right now, servicing is being discounted. So there's a premium for that, because if you could book servicing at a point, well, and, you need, and you're booking it today at zero, you have to raise rates a quarter percent to make up for that point. If you're going to be looking at uh, capacity issues, perhaps you're raising rates to deal with that. If you're fearful that people not may not make payments, well, you're going to add overlays and you're going to ask for higher FICO scores. If there's no market for jumbo loans, it's going to be difficult in the secondary market to do that because of fear. The jumbo loan market is going into a hiatus to some extent because people are worried if you're going to service a jumbo loan or you're going to be an investor on a jumbo loan, if there is this enormous amount of unemployment, people aren't going to make payments, you know, that could be a problem. Conventional loans are an issue because the FHFA hasn't given guidance on what do we do with forbearance. And by the way, could we have just done it responsibly and said, can you prove hardship? But no, they made it as a free for all for everybody. So it's going to get abused. And when you have a first payment that's missed, maybe due to forbearance, that loan's not saleable. It's going to sit on your warehouse line. The scratch and dent market to get rid of it isn't really there. So this is just an awful situation everywhere around. And it puts you in an uncomfortable position because your customer just wants answers. They just want to know what's going on. And you're in a position where you, know, you go to your company and this is a time where you'd hope that they can make some exceptions or do some things, but you're probably being met with a lot of resistance. Don't, don't take that the wrong way. Your company's just trying to navigate these very treacherous waters and survive. And when I say your company, that could be a wholesale lender. If you're a broker, it could be a, re, you know, a lender that you're dealing with if you're in the retail side of things. But in either case, these are very, very treacherous times, and they're just trying to get through. They probably need as much of your support as you possibly can. I want to tell you what the new reality might look like. You're going to look at with more difficult time getting loans with you know, no closing costs. You'll be looking at much more aggressive pricing if you pay points because they want to try and avoid what got messed up with prepayment speeds. That You'll probably be in a position where there'll be more early payment defaults. You'll probably see... Um, a more punitive stance for longer rate locks. 
So this is the reality that we're all going to be looking at. And the good news about that is that we're all going to be looking at that. Now, right now, there's a lot of bifurcation and disjointedness. You'll see one lender could do something or is at a certain rate and you might not be or that will change. And that is just because we're in a chaotic state. As things begin to settle and they will, you will see much more stability start to take hold and we're all going to be in the same boat. So I'm telling you that while things might be different, they'll be manageable for you and you will be in a wonderful position going forward. I think rates stay very low because I believe that Jay Powell will not want to begin the money printing that we're seeing elsewhere. So a lot of that has to do with how long we, we are in this state. You know, we're going to be in like three states right now, crisis state, and then there's going to be the unlockdown state. The unlockdown state will see things start to improve. It'll be tough. And then there's going to be the much more back to normal state. And that'll occur after we have a vaccine. And again, I think that's going to probably come before the end of this year. I, I hope it does. There's a lot of reason to be, to be optimistic about before the end of this year. And I know that sounds like, oh, seven months from now. But seven months does go quickly. And while we're going to be in a turbulent time, once we get there, I think we will start to see a lot of improvement. Now, not every business is going to come back. And it's not going to be easy because you can't just flip a switch and have businesses come back. There'll be some casualties there. You know, commercial real estate is going to be tough because people are discovering that Maybe I don't need that overhead. So I'd look for commercial real estate to be on the decline, but residential real estate, depending on how quickly jobs come back, will really start to come back in a very strong way. Uh, I also think gold is a good place to be. But residential real estate, if you take a look at the opportunity there, um, a couple of months ago or a month and a half ago when we all thought Corona was still a beer, would you'd be looking to purchase real estate in a pretty frustrating way. Uh, you're outbid. You know, multiple offers, sellers you know, not being very flexible. There's going to be a period of time now where real estate values are going to drop. And I think it's going to be between 5 and 8%. You know, some people that are pretty respectable think it's a little bit less than that. Some people that think that are pretty respectable think that it might be a little more than that. But let's just say that we're kind of in the ballpark at 5 to 8%. That's a great opportunity because it will come back. I think you'll see values start to come back in 2021, 2022, and beyond. And typically speaking, real estate's a long-term investment. A lot of people ask questions about the stock market. Um, and the stock market right now, I think, I, listen, I can't tell you what to do, but I think that if you look at Thursday's close, market was closed Friday, uh, we reached what's called the 50% Fibonacci retracement. I went over that in this morning's update on MBS Highway. And, you know, we've been making some pretty good calls on where the market would go and the stock market's turning points would be. That seems to be a good a good level for a turning point of 50% Fibonacci retracement to see some downward move. How far down? It's very hard always to say, but I do think you, you do get some, some uh, extension on the move to the downside here. So I probably would not be buying with both fists here. I'd wait till there's a bit, little bit more of a downturn. And then I think that's an opportunity too. Uh, stocks will come back. They're probably not going to come back um, as quickly as many people think, because I don't think we're pricing in all this. Uh, the unemployment rate, as you can imagine, is going to rise. That's going to create some issues and some problems for us. Uh, we're going to be in a position where the unemployment rate uh, probably easily gets to 20%. I mean, let's think about it. We're at three and a half percent. So that means you had, you know, roughly 5 million people unemployed. It was a little bit less than that. But let's use round numbers. We added 17 to that. So that's 22 million people. We're probably going to get six or seven or 8 million people. So we, we get pretty quickly to a number that's high 20 million uh, out of work, 32 million puts you at a 20% rate of unemployment. So you can get there pretty quick. And I don't think this is gonna turn. I think that when you look at the way that it's reported, the states are seeing their systems crash. Uh, they're usually antiquated platforms like COBOL. So they're calling for programmers to try and help. But you know, New York and California with their population levels should have much higher rates of unemployment or, or initial jobless claims, I should say, not getting that. Uh, reporting. So I think that we're, we're more than likely going to see that climb probably above 20% unemployment. How fast it comes back will tell us, you know, how quickly our economy gets back on its feet, how quickly we get through the mortgage uh, issues of, of non-payment and how quickly the real estate market comes back. But if you think of real estate as a long-term investment, we should be there pretty quick. So um, you're, you're going to see things like Chase tightening up guidelines because this forbearance issue is, is scary. And the unemployment rate is also scary. So they, there's going to be some cherry picking here of just cream of the crop borrowers that you're going to say, well, they can have more uh, longevity if they lose their job, 
and they're in a position where they can manage their finances better, they've shown the ability to save, they've got better credit, or they've got less debt. So these are all factors that you're going to be seeing. Now, will this last forever? No, you know, when the market settles down and real estate starts to come back, greed will start to come in. And let's remember the difference between this and 2006, seven, eight, is that people actually have equity now. You know, the, just look at the real estate market. There's 128 million households, of which about 65% are owned. Of those, about 40% don't even have a mortgage. So those people are in really good shape. And those that have a mortgage, the roughly 50 million households have an average LTV of 53. Think about that. So there's a lot of good that this market has that we did not have back during the housing bubble financial crisis. So there's some things that are bad and worse, but a lot that's better. So I think that because this was kind of self-induced as a shutdown, we'll see a start to climb out of this, start to come back, and then things will fall into place. I mean, you know, if you look from an optimistic standpoint, at the end of this year, we, we, you know, we probably have a lot less fear from the health standpoint. We probably have a vaccine. We probably have businesses coming back. We probably have you know, a much more uh, stabilized situation. The bad thing that's gonna be looking forward is the debt overhang. That's going to be bad for a long time. And that's gonna affect us. Uh, Megan, any quick questions I can answer for the next couple of minutes before I jump? But I do wanna say this. What Megan is gonna show you is a couple of things. And I want Megan to show you the social studio uh, because that's what you need to do right now. The, the big thing for you right now, the biggest opportunity is the opportunity within you. Uh, you are the biggest opportunity right now because there's a vacuum. People need information desperately. Uh, people need guidance desperately. And you need to digest and accumulate that. I know I'm preaching to the choir because that's why you're on these calls. You know, David's going to have a call with you guys tomorrow. And, and, and David's brilliant. David Luna is going to be giving you value like he always does. But you know, as much value and information as you can consume, but don't just consume it, teach it. And you can get that out there with, uh, with with social media and doing it right. Megan is, there's nobody better than Megan at understanding and knowing how to do this. She's going to show you how to do this. And then what you'll also be able to do to learn from Megan, I think today is how to really change people's lives for the better. To the extent you could do them, I know, look, some cash out refinances, they're not as great price wise, but Megan, when you, when you show that, show, show a ridiculous example, show somebody going from much lower rate to a much higher rate and just show how crazy ridiculous it is to, to, uh, to do that. And, um, and Megan, any, any questions that you, that you have here that we can, uh, yeah, and I know, Paul, I know that the vaccine trials usually take four years or so, but I've uh, been in touch with the, some people at the NIH, uh, as well as the Cleveland Clinic, and a lot of other people, and uh, we're looking for a vaccine to be much shorter than that, although you are correct on what a normal vaccine would be, but this is now something that's really being pushed because our, uh, our well-being really, really depends on it, so we'll probably see that. Uh, what's the impact of... Um, Quicken and UWM's volume and their inability to sell these loans off. Well, so far they're making they're making use of some creative tools to to get loans sold, and they're still selling loans. But first payment default does make things really really tricky. We haven't really seen the impact of that. That's why I you know I hope that we get some guidance from the FHFA. Uh, anything else that you see, Megan, out here that I haven't addressed real quick? Um, there was something about the PPP. Yes, the payroll yeah. protection plan. The payroll yeah. protection plan, um, I think it's a good thing. I, th I Believe it or not, I think forbearance can be, if used properly with guidance, a good thing because you don't have people putting their homes into foreclosure. You have the real estate market much more stabilized, but it has to be messaged better. It has to be done with responsibility. So it's not a free for all for those who don't need it. For those who need it, it's a good thing it stabilizes the housing market, but it could have a, a bad effect if it jeopardizes the safety of servicers, if it's abused by people, if it, you know, that, that's going to put people in a position of, of having the jeopardizing home values too. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is explain to people that this is not a free ride. Of course, we all know at this point, hopefully that has to be paid back, but you know, people are thinking that it's not going to have a negative credit effect because it may not affect their score, but that doesn't speak to lenders who see this and may not want to do their loan in the future. So they really are jeopardizing themselves. Um, anything else, Megan, that you see on here? Guys, if you have any questions, go ahead and hit me up real quick. Anyone I have any questions? I think before you kind of head off, if you could kind of just leave us all with what we should be really focusing on articulating to clients right now 
and referral partners that might be helpful. So your referral partners are, are worried if they're real estate agents because they're seeing their business tank and they're, they're you know, we got to talk them off the ledge here. The real estate market is going to be strong. Uh, they can't be looking at forbearance as something that they don't use to educate others. I think what Megan is going to show you is something you have to show realtors that realtors need to be able to use this time to be leaders and to educate and to use social media, use the fact that people are quarantined and at home and ready to listen and ready to learn and ready to look at opportunities. And that'll transcend this period and it'll continue on. So here's your chance to build a great following for yourself, for your realtors to build that up. Maybe do it with your realtors, provide them the information that they need for their clients. What a great thing for you to be doing right now so that you can build those. As far as the opportunities, we talked about those. And I think that going forward, I think those are, those are something that, that we will we'll all have, your clients included. And those of your clients who, who are out there right now looking for what to do to, to the extent that you could pull some cash out, do refinance cash out, I know it's not easy to do. But even if it is a little bit more expensive on the cost front, I think that you will find that if you could give them a cushion of dollars in cash, if you could pay off their debts, then you're going to put them at ease because you'll definitely give them a much more comfortable payment to maintain. And then the other benefit of that is when things do settle down, you take those savings from wiping out all their debts and accelerate their new mortgage towards it. And as Megan will show you, you'll be able to put them in a position to uh, have a much more stable future for themselves and protect them. Uh, but, but mostly I think that during this time, you know, we just have to show grace to each other because this is, this is a time when everybody's stressed. All of you are stressed. You've got issues at home. You've got issues with realtors, with customers, you know, and, and let's face it, we're all kind of a little bit nervous too about, you know, we want to make sure our health and so many people we care about health is not impacted. Uh, this virus is, you know, it's, it's, it's nasty and, you know, some bad things can happen. So, you know, that's, that's a fear and, and it sucks for all of us to go out and you got masks and gloves, it's just so unnatural, you know, and so awful you know, and, and to be cooped up, it's, it's not easy. But, um, but listen, first of all, it's a good time to be grateful for all the great things that you have and, and the fact that you do get to work. And yeah, I know you've got problems and I know that everywhere you turn is another thing. It's like, ah, this is another point of heartburn. But, you know, hey, at least we have work to do. At least we get to help people. Uh, there are so many people that really wish they had the problems that we call problems. They would welcome those as uh, part of the other things that we get, which is the benefits that we get. So um, I'd, I'd like to, to ask you to keep it in perspective for yourself and also to help those um, that you work with to keep things in perspective and in check and look for those opportunities today, because that's what will, that's what people will look back on. And instead of saying, oh man, I wish I would have done that. Look for those, they're all around you. And uh, you, you can definitely make some, make some differences for people right now. Thank you, Barry, for taking time with us today. We my my, my pleasure. My pleasure. Bye, everyone. Bye, Barry. Okay. Now that Barry's gone, the, Barry's gone, the party's going to really start here. I'm going to dive into some of the tools of MBS Highway, and I'm going to mostly start to focus on the ones that I think that we really need to use during this time of social distancing and quarantine. And I know Eric posted a link. If you guys have not taken advantage yet, of the trial period, you guys get a 30 day trial of MBS Highway. Go ahead, click that link that Eric posted. I'll be sure to post it in the recap email that I send out to Audrey as well. And you guys can take advantage of that. And if for some reason you have not received your username and password and you did sign up for it, you can go ahead and email me. I'm gonna post my email right here and my, my phone number in case you guys wanna reach out that way as well. So I'm gonna share my screen here and let's go ahead and get started. So you should be able to see my screen now and I really wanna take this time to focus a lot of the tools on MBS Highway that we should be using during this time of quarantine and social distancing. And the first one that I wanna share with you guys, Barry talked about, and it's utilizing social media. If you did not like social video before, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to get over it. It's a great way to reach people, and it's a lot easier. Remember when the Fed cut rates to zero and you guys got bombarded with phone calls from referral partners and clients? Does this mean I get a 0% mortgage rate? And you had to sit there and have the same conversation 10, 15 minutes at a time with so many people? 
well, it's so much easier to make one video, post it, have hundreds of people see it. And then when you get these questions, instead of sitting on the phone with them, you can say, hey, I'm gonna shoot you over a video that I did that explains the whole thing. Let me know if you have questions from there. It's gonna make your life easier. So let's step it up on social media and make sure that we stay top of mind during this time of social distancing. And videos scare a lot of people, you know, I hate the way I look, I hate the way I sound, how do I know what to say? Well, this tool really makes it easy. We have scripts already created for you and we're constantly coming out with new ones. If you guys do have an idea for a script that you want us to write one on, by all means, just go ahead and let me know. We are constantly listening to you guys trying to make this platform even better. So, you know, let's say we wanted to talk about finding opportunity during these challenging times. All you have to do is click next. Once you get to this point, you can go ahead and edit it however you like. You can film from your mobile device. You can film from your desktop. You click here to allow camera access. And I don't know if the camera will work since I am uh, utilizing it on Zoom, but let's give it a go here. So here we go, allow camera access. You can adjust the scroll speed. You can adjust the font size. And then when you're ready, I mean, you just go ahead, you click record, you smile. COVID-19 has caused a virtual economic shutdown. And since the words are up there at the top, I mean, it looks like you're looking at the camera. When you're done, you just smile again. And then you go ahead, you can download this, you can upload this to whatever social media platform you want to. You can go ahead, blast it out through an email, whatever the case may be. This makes it so easy to go ahead and create those short, compelling social media videos. You can also get in here and create your own if you want to. So get out there, be consistent with social media and help educate your potential buyers and referral partners. Now, another tool that I think is really important right now, again, with the social distancing, is this screen record, screen share feature. Now, this is really great right now because it's a little bit more challenging to meet up with that potential referral partner for coffee or meet up with that client. They might not want to come into your office. And what this allows you to do is really create that trust within the relationship. You know, People do business with people they know, like, and trust. And when they're not seeing our face and everything is through the phone, it makes it a little bit harder to reach that level of connection. So there's two options when it comes to utilizing this screen share feature. There's a live option. This is for the client that can sit down at your desk, at their desk, wherever they are, and they can walk through this with you in real time. And all you do, you enter in their name, you enter in their email address, and you click send invite and start. Now the client won't have to download anything. And the next thing you know, you are sharing your screen here. Now you can walk them through anything. It does not have to be MBS Highway related. You can walk them through any aspect that you want. You can pause this, you can stop it. It is also, you'll see, the microphone is through here as well, or you can call them, whatever you prefer. You can share your entire screen, or you can share this little rectangle, which really allows you to kind of come in, you can resize this thing, you can drag it between monitors, whatever the case may be. When you're done, you just hit stop, and then you've stopped sharing. Now, it's very similar when it comes to the screen record feature. In this though, you're just going to type in the client's name or whatever the case may be, whatever you wanna title it. You're gonna hit record, walk through whatever it is that you wanna go ahead and walk through. Again, it does not have to be MBS Highway related. When you're done, you just click stop. And what this will do is it will render the video, send the link to your email, and then from there, you can send that link out to whoever it is that you want. So if you're doing a weekly newsletter, if you wanna blast something out to a list of people, that's a great way to do it and ultimately reach people. Now I know that we have some comments here, so I'm gonna check the chat box really quickly. Yes, um, 
I'm going to post that link again for everyone of where to go to get the trial one more time. And I'll also send this in the recap as well. Now, as far as a script in another language, there is not the capability for that right now. Uh, by all means, though, if you want to go ahead and do like a Google Translate or anything like that, that's a quick way to kind of get that. And then you can go ahead and upload that. And when you create your own scripts, and then you'll have it in a different language. Kudos to you for being able to speak Chinese. Okay, so that's definitely a tool that I recommend. Another one that I really want to recommend that Barry talked a lot about is our ability to get in and help people right now. And one way that we can do that in a really just kind of easy way for them to see it is this debt consolidation tool. You know, I know that the care stimulus package went through and maybe people are getting that $1,200 stimulus check and the $500 per child, but that really only goes so far. And Barry spoke about the unemployment levels and we're gonna get the rest of them this week. It'll be interesting to see if we hit that 20% mark, how close we get, and really just how much this escalates during this time. But people are worried, you know, do I have enough money? Am I gonna have enough money to pay my bills? I'm worried about getting in more debt. And we're in a wonderful opportunity where we can really come in and we can help people and we can help mitigate these fears. And one way to do that is through the use of this debt consolidation tool. Now, we do have this for the purchase and move up buyer, but the example that I'm going to share with you guys today is that refinance scenario. And I do want to point out something here. We're going to be going over a lot of tools today, and I want you to know where to find help when you need it because I don't expect you to remember everything. So we have a dynamic help feature and no matter what tool you go to, you'll see this little side toolbar over here. If you click this one, that's a question mark inside of a camera, a how-to video is gonna pop up and walk you through that scenario. So here we are helping this client that is worried about getting in more debt and they're worried about not being able to pay their bills. We go ahead, we're gonna plug in their monthly qualifying income. Then we're gonna plug in that existing property information. So in this scenario, this client purchased a $500,000 home in Hillsborough, Florida in January of 2017. Now this is just a quick example. You can get in here and you can edit any of these values to play out whatever scenario you guys have going on. We go ahead, we click continue. They have not refinanced yet. They took out a loan amount of 400000 and at the time, they got it as a 30-year conventional fixed and at a rate of 3.5%. Now we go ahead, we click continue, and then we're going to add in their current debts and obligations. And you'll see over here that I've added some in already. Once we add in their debts, it's going to show us where they land on those qualifying ratios on both that front and back end. And again, you guys can get in here. You can edit these depending upon the scenario. But then we're going to put in that proposed information, what we're looking to refi them to. So in this scenario, we're looking to refinance them to a 30-year conventional fixed, but now the rate's at 5%. Now, I know that you guys can do better right now, but I want to make this ugly to show how powerful debt and equity can really be. So we hit calculate here, and it's going to show us at first glance, you know, it might not make a lot of sense for that person to refinance. It's going to end up costing them an extra $245 a month. And there's what, $4,000 in closing costs. But wait a second, Mr. And Mrs. Client, since you purchased that home, you've been building equity. Now, that's represented here by this white space. What if we were to use some of that equity to pay off your debt? Because I know you're worried about getting in more debt. So how about we pay it off? So we just come in here, we click these. And the system's smart enough to know, you know, you can't include alimony, you can't include child support, but if we were to pay off your debt, Mr. and Mrs. Client, I could save you over $1,000 a month. Now, I know you're a little bit worried about how you're going to be paying your bills through this. So how much money do you think that you'll need to get you through this time period? Well, you know, I think that we're going to need about 15000 Okay, let's go ahead. Let's pull that in. Let's pull some cash out. 15,000. Let's see what this looks like. 
So I'm saving you a little less per month, Mr. And Mrs. Client. But again, we're paying off your debt, which you were worried about. I'm getting you that $15,000 cash in hand. And listen, I know that you came into my office. Well, maybe not came into the office. Maybe you connected on screen share here. And you were bragging to me about your rate. You were bragging to me about your payment. But here's the thing. Let's take this money that I'm saving you and reinvest that back into your mortgage. So literally nothing is changing here. You're gonna make the same payment. The only difference is we're paying off your debt and I'm getting you that $15,000 cash in hand. So we're reinvesting this back into your mortgage and I know you love your payment, but how much more would you love it if you didn't have to make that payment 134 times? And since we're making this a shorter time period and paying it off sooner, I'm able to increase your net worth by 214,000. This is such a powerful tool. Now, when it comes to MBS Highway, there's a few ways that we can share these tools. First off, again, I really recommend that you do the screen share or screen record, especially if you cannot connect in person, on video is the next best way. But we can export every single piece. And when you're exporting these, you can co-brand on every single piece. If you decide not to co-brand, it's just going to be your logo on that other side. You hit continue. From here, you can download as an image. You can email as a PDF to yourself. Or you can download as a PDF right away. And then you'll have this really great piece to go ahead and give them. That's one way to share. Now the next way to share is my favorite way to share. And I recommend that you get in the habit of just doing this anyways. And this is through the use of save and share. So we can come in here, we can name it whatever we want. We click save, which is great because maybe they give you a call and they say, "Ugh, Johnny broke his leg. You know, we racked up another credit card bill. Can you go ahead and add that in? Well, now you don't have to recreate the piece. You can just go ahead and add that one dead in. But my second favorite thing about this is now you can share it through interactive links. You can text this link directly to yourself. You can send it to the client without even leaving the MBS Highway platform. Or, you know, maybe you want to make it more personal, do a video and send this along with it and say, you know, hey, Susie, it was so nice to meet with you today. I just wanted to send you what we went over and you paste the link. Well, a few days later, Susie, she's checking her email. She clicks the link and she's sent to this landing page where she is then required to enter in her name and email address. And the second that Susie clicks view presentation, you're actually going to get notified that she is open and viewing this document, which is a great time to pick up the phone and give her a call and see if she has any questions. And the, my favorite thing about this is it's interactive. You know, a PDF is a PDF. It's a flat piece. But when it comes to the links, you know, maybe Susie's in here and she's like, well, you know, interest on that Chevy, it's really not that much. What would it look like if I didn't include that? So she can play around with some of this. And if for whatever reason you need to up, update this, on your end, it's gonna automatically update on her end. You don't have to send her a new link or anything like that. It will update in live time. So that is a tool that I really recommend right now for each and every one of you. And I know we have some questions here, so I wanna go ahead and look at them. Awesome, yes, you guys will get the recording of this. And Kay Wilder, I'm not sure what your name is on here, but if you could just shoot me over your email, that would be great. So that's a tool that I recommend right now. And the other one that I wanna make sure that each and every one of you is utilizing right now is the morning update. This is kind of vital, especially, you know, we need to stop thinking about just being transactional and start stepping into being an advisor. And with everything being so volatile and crazy right now, you're kind of expected to be able to articulate and educate your clients and your referral partners on what's happening. And the best way to do that is through the morning update. And you'll get sent this in an email every single morning but what this is is this is a video breaking down what's happening and how it could potentially affect rates and if you don't have time to watch this you'll actually get it in text format below as well and in this video if there's anything to share any news that comes out we'll actually create an image for you to share on social media and you can find that under the marketing tab on social share 
And this is all compliant information. You just one step click. Maybe I want to post it to my Facebook page. I'm not logged into my Facebook new computer. There's so many things to set up on this thing, but if you were logged in, it'd pop up right on your Facebook and you could go ahead and one step click and post that. And again, that just makes it really easy and convenient to stay consistent and on top of your social media. Now, also in that morning update, Barry will go over the technicals, which you can find here on the markets page. And this is a live overview of what's happening currently in the market. And if you wanted to kind of share with your client what has been happening, I mean, you can do that. So maybe I wanted to use the 10 year to share reason being just because it's a little bit easier for that client to understand because it moves in the same direction as the 10 year goes up rates go up as it goes down rates go down. Whereas generally speaking with a 30 year it's an inverse relationship. So if I wanted to share with my client what's going on, I would just click show chart. From here, we can zoom out as far as we want. We can zoom in as far as we want. And maybe I want to focus right here. Now, if for whatever reason, you and I both know that these levels of resistance and moving averages are important, but let's just say for the client, we wanted to clean it up a little bit. You can do that. You can come in here, remove these Fibonacci levels, remove the moving averages, and really just kind of clean this chart up. You can also use this little pencil tool to draw all over this thing. So you can doodle, you can draw, whatever it is that you want to make your point of, great. And then again, you can go ahead, you can export this, you can co-brand this, you can make a video. And that's a really great way to kind of educate our clients as well. And we just did an alert to lock as I saw. And if there is a need for alert to lock, you guys will get it in two formats. You'll get it in a text message and you'll also get it in a phone call. Now, both those features can be shut off if you don't want them, but just know that that is an option. And also if there's any updates throughout the day, we'll put them up here as well. And just as kind of a market advisory standpoint, you will get about four text messages throughout the day, letting you know the day change on the market. So those are some tools that I really recommend right now. Also, you know, we have the market wrap up. You'll get this sent in an email every single day, just kind of recapping what happened in the market and news that'll come out the rest of the week. And right now it's really important that we kind of dive in a little bit deeper. So you guys get weekly access to Malden, Kipler letters, art cash in, buy the numbers. We have an economic calendar. This is similar to Bloomberg. You can come in here. Maybe you wanna know when initial jobless claims comes out. This is gonna be the one that we really focus on this week. Maybe you don't wanna forget it. Let's go ahead, let's add that to our calendar so that we don't forget. Now I see that we have some more questions, so I'm gonna check those as well. Perfect. Okay, so someone asked about other refinance tools in here. So I also want to dive into our loan compare. We have this on both the purchase and refi side. So we'll go ahead, we'll click this refi comparison. And what this tool does is it really allows us to come in and create different refinance scenarios and help answer the question, what one is going to be best? Bear with me, I'm gonna mute someone. Okay, so in this tool, we go ahead, we plug in that current property information. We go ahead, we plug in that current loan information, and then we get in and we create the different refinance options over here. And it's so easy to add these. I'll show you guys, it's the same system, but I'll show you when we go to the purchase side on how to create one of these. But once we are in here and we're done creating these, what it's going to do is it's going to show us the top refinance pick by category. So we'll share the best loan based on cost, break even based on payment, monthly savings versus existing loan, and the total interest savings versus existing loan. We'll then give kind of a breakdown here where you can expand for more information and you can also come in and highlight. So maybe you wanna highlight how the rate's gonna be different or the term. If you highlight something you don't want to, you just click it and it will remove that. And then we're gonna break it down. So we're gonna break down the monthly savings based off of all those options. 
And we can come in here and you'll see this little slider toolbar where you can slide this to whatever year it is that you want to and it will break it down for us. We're gonna share the lowest cost, so that best loan based on cost. And let me drag this time period out a little bit more. We're gonna share the break even points. Now we're gonna share the break even based on monthly cost and the break even based on monthly payment. Then we're gonna share that amortization schedule, mortgage freedom points, total interest savings, and what I love about this one is it's kind of a, a rough overview of what it would look like to go with different refinance options. So let's say you share this with them and they say, okay, you know what? I feel like that 15 year conventional is gonna be the best way to go. Can we dive in a little bit deeper? Well, at that point in time, you can actually click this migration tool and it's actually gonna migrate into that debt consolidation tool. And since you've already entered in some of the information, it's gonna pull that information and automatically put it into this calculator. So it's gonna make it really quick and easy for you to go ahead and plug that in and help that client. So those are two options for a refinance calculator. Another one that we have just for you guys to check out, and I'm not gonna go over this one in detail, is the LTV Analyzer. Sorry about that, guys, I clicked on the wrong one. This LTV Analyzer, and what this does is it's our first refinance calculator that we ever came out with. Really what it allows you to do is compare one against the current. So those are the options that you have as far as refinance tools. Now, when it comes to the purchase side of things, because I know some of you asked about that, we have a few tools for that as well. We have the loan compare on the purchase side, and this is actually one of the most used calculators here on MBS Highway, and there's two parts to this tool. There's the loan comparison piece. That's pretty self-explanatory. You're getting in, you're comparing different loan options. Then there's the cost of waiting piece. This is the number one requested piece from referral partners. So let's go ahead and let's break this down. So again, we come in here, we plug in the property information. Now I just wanna point out here on any tool, and we'll start to dive in when I get to some of the other tools, I'm gonna to pull up specifically for California, you guys. I just wanna make sure that we're able to get through all the tools and these ones you know, we'll get there. But I do want to point out that anywhere where it says use smart search, if that client has a specific home, you can actually come in here and pull in that MLS and you can just enter that and it will pull all the information in from that listing. We also just got data by zip code, which I'm really excited about because when it comes to certain pieces like the real estate report card, the buy versus rent, um, it's really powerful to be able to have that zip code. So note that that is an option as well, or you can do the classic drop down where you just plug in the state and county. So we plug in the property information and then here's where we create the different loan options. And I just wanna share with you guys how fast it is to come in here and create these. So you name them, whatever you want. Let's say they're gonna put 10% down. Do note here that if you are doing a financing second loan option, this is where you're gonna find it. But let's say they're gonna put 10% down. It's a 30 year conventional. It's gonna be fixed. The rate's gonna be at 4%, no points. Now monthly MI, anywhere in here we can come in, we can change these. But if a box pops up, help me, well, it's there to do just that, you guys. So you click help me, and from here we have a few options. Is it gonna be monthly? Is it gonna be a single premium? <laughs> Let's say it's monthly, and their credit score comes in at 720. And they have none of these additional modifiers. Great, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pull that in. Now closing costs, again, you can get in here, you can change this to whatever number you want, but we've made it easier for you guys. You can create worksheets now. So you'll see here that I have saved closing costs worksheets. And once you save these, you can just pull them in on any calculator. So we come in, we fill these out. Note, you can just click the drop downs here. And on any of these, you can click the little check mark to include that in your APR. You can add escrows. I know that was a question that I got today being specifically in California. So you can add those in. You can export this as a PDF. So you'll have a nice exported sheet to list out all the closing costs for your clients. And you can also just pull it in, add loan. 
That's how easy it is to create these loans. And I'm going to delete this one because we don't want to compare that one. But once you get done creating the different loan options, similar to the refinance, it's going to kind of break it down for us. It's going to show us the total monthly cost snapshot. Again, we have the little slider toolbar so we can show them how that evolves over the years. We're going to share with them the total paid on principal and interest. And I love this because you can really, you know, you can toggle between the two here and very quickly show them how that evolves throughout the course of that loan. Now, what loan is going to be best for you, Mr. and Mrs. Client? Well, in reality, it's all of them. It just depends on how long you're staying in that home. Now, you told me you're going to stay in that home for 12 years. Well, in that case, I might recommend that 30-year fix at 3.5% with two points in upfront MI. Now, let's say you're estimating that rates are going to go down. You're going to be able to refi them. So they might not recoup the cost that it takes to have points. Well, if you want to take anything out of this, you can just click it, and it will remove it from the scenario. Then we're going to share with them the remaining balance on that loan. Again, for whatever year it is, you want to take a look at. Now, here's my favorite part. Let's say you share this with a client and they say, okay, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I was a little bit resistant with going with points. I feel like it's the best option. But man, do I really want to move my family right now with this whole thing going on? I think maybe we should wait six to 12 months and readdress this. Okay, you know, let's see if there's going to be any adverse side effects to waiting. Let's take the loan option that they're thinking about and let's go ahead and enable this cost of waiting. And people live in a bubble. You know, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Client, unfortunately, if you're going to decide to wait, it doesn't really mean the market's going to wait with you. In reality, that property value is going to continue to appreciate, which means the longer you wait, the more that loan amount's going to be, the greater the down payment's going to be. And as you've seen, the market has been so volatile, who knows where the rate's going to be at. Now, again, you can get in, you can edit these values, but then we'll break it down for that client. And if they were to wait six months on a payment difference, it's going to cost them an extra $25. And, you know, I know that doesn't seem like a lot, Mr. and Mrs. Client, but I want to understand the bigger picture here because by not purchasing today, you're missing out in property appreciation and amortization. Waiting that six months is actually costing you closer to nine, $10,000. And here it is for one year, two years, and three years. And then here it is in graphical format as well. And again, we can export, we can co-brand this piece. And that's a really great tool to use as well. The other one that I want to point out under here is property comparison. This is great if you're looking to compare. It's very similar to loan compare. The only difference here is if you want to do different purchase prices. So it's really great if they're looking at multiple homes and they can't decide what one. Or what I've also seen this used as that I really like was an over budget, at budget, under budget scenario. And again, it's very similar we're looking at, you know, comparing different loan options. We're going to break down that monthly cost, principal and interest, what loan is going to be best. The only difference here is that we're sharing with them how that equity position is different over an extended period of time. So love the loan advisor tab. Check that out. I want to get into a little bit more of your guys' demographics. So one of the tools that I want to go to for that is the buy versus rent. And this is a really powerful tool for that client that is maybe on the fence. You know, let's say they're living in a high rise condo right now and they're like, man, suburban life has never looked better, but uh, you know, should I continue renting? Should I look at purchasing? What should I do? Well, we're going to help answer that question. So let's go ahead. Let's plug in a purchase price and you guys are in California. So I'm going to pick, let's go with 600,000. Let's go to California. Let's see, where are you guys at again? I know that we had a Fontina. Give me a county to go to, you guys. I do like Contra Costa. I know some people were in Orange County or Placer County. Let's take a look at what this looks like. Let's go to Orange County. Oh, I know someone just commented. Sacramento. Okay. We'll go to Sacramento County. 
All right, let's take a look at Sacramento. Oh, good. This is a good one to go to. So one thing about this is you guys need to look at this for the county that you're doing business in because one thing that I know about California is your guys' annual rental increase is crazy. So go in here and look at it for your county because we actually have that data and that's a really good fact for you to know to be able to articulate what that means to the client on a cash flow basis. So just to kind of show you where some of these numbers are coming from, and again, you can edit them, but since we know the cost per square foot for both rent and purchasing, we take the average square footage of a $600,000 home in Sacramento County and pull a comparable monthly rent. So in this case, a comparable monthly rent would be around $3,100 a month. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to put in renter's insurance. And then again, we also know the annual rental increase for every county. So go check this out for your county because it's a really, really good fact for you guys to know. Now we name the property, we put in the purchase price, we're gonna put in that tax bracket. It will default to using your county average tax rate, but you can adjust this, you can edit the number or you can type in a percentage and it will do the math for you. We're gonna put in that monthly home insurance, annual property tax increase. We're gonna plug in repairs and HOA. And we're also gonna put in that full 6% in commission that they're gonna to have to give to that real estate agent when they decide to move out of that home. And I actually think it's lower in California. I think it's what, maybe around more like four or 5%. But again, you can get in here, you can adjust that. And every time I show this calculator, I get someone that comes on and they're like, why are you showing the negatives? But in reality, it's the negatives that help build trust. It's like when you go out to eat and you're hungry and you want to order everything on the menu. Of course, none of us are going out to eat now, but you know, it's, when that server looks at you and they say, you know, listen, our serving sizes are really large and I, I know you ordered the meatloaf, but I would not order it. It's not something that you want to hear, but you appreciate the fact that they told you. And more than likely, even if you don't go back, it's not going to affect the tip that you end up leaving that server because again, you appreciate them. So it really helps build trust when we lay it all out there. Now, let's say this client, they're going to put 10% down. It's going to be a 30-year conventional fix. The rate's going to be at 4%. We're going to plug in MI. We're going to plug in closing costs. Now, this client's thinking about living here 10 years before selling. Now, you'll see here that we're going to share with them that appreciation gain. You can customize this. Do you want to use the forecast rate of appreciation? Do you want to use historical? Maybe you want to pop in a custom. You can choose. And then we're going to put in their tax bracket. And if you don't know, just click in here. You know how much they're bringing in. Let's say it's a married couple. They're making $150,000 a year together, putting them in that 22% tax bracket. And then really important, we want to put their filing status. It's crazy to me how many people I still see talking about this crazy tax benefit. And listen, we don't want to show an overinflated number here because whether they purchase a home or not, they're gonna get that standard deduction. So instead of showing this crazy number, let's share with them over and above that standard deduction, which they get anyways, what is gonna be the benefit tax-wise to purchasing a home? And with the doubling of the standard deduction, I mean, it's a lot less than a lot of people are saying. You know, in this case, if they were married filing jointly, they would need over $24,000 in things like property tax and whatnot to even begin to get that benefit. So let's take a look at this and we see it's going to end up being more expensive to purchase that home than it would be to rent it on a cash flow basis by about $700 a month. Although, you know, not really for long because rents are going up 5.2% annually and by year five, it basically becomes a wash. And on year six, they end up spending more on a cash flow basis to rent versus purchase that home. And at the end of the 10 years, they're thinking about living there, they'd be about $11,000 better off purchasing over renting on a cash flow basis. And that's just the beginning. You know, they could expect to gain $529,000 through appreciation alone. And then there's the best kept secret, equity through amortization. I know that you know this, but let's make sure every single client knows that part of that monthly mortgage payment is principal and interest. And while some of that goes back to the lender, 
The other portion is basically a forced savings plan. I mean, this is $114,000 guaranteed. Now, I know they have to live there a certain amount of years to receive this, but that is guaranteed money. We go ahead, we click show results, and they might be surprised to know that they'd be $580,000 better off purchasing this home over renting it. And that's including $68,000 in commission to that real estate agent when they decide to move out of that home. Now here's kind of my favorite part is let's say they're like, well, you know, that's great. I had no idea, Bleh, but what if I don't live there 10 years? Well, how long do you think you're gonna live there? Five, six, seven? You'll see when we click in here, every single number up there is going to change. And in this case, if they were to live there past a year, it really benefits them to move forward with purchasing over renting. So that's a really great tool that I recommend as well. I'm gonna check the chat box here. I see that we have another message here, <laughs> Lisa. So definitely go ahead and check out this buy versus rent comparison in your county, if nothing more than to get that annual rental increase because it's quite fascinating. Another tool that I really recommend is the real estate report card. Now, here is where we can utilize this smart search and we can plug in the zip code as well. So I just want to plug in, let's plug in the lucky number of 95682. Let's see where this is located. El Dorado County. So you'll see here that you can also do it for the MSA. That stands for Metropolitan Statistical Area. That's an area marked off by the government. It'll tell you what it includes. But El Dorado, you got a lot of good things happening for you here. So these badges are great talking points. And in El Dorado, you're top 10% in the United States for five-year forecasted appreciation, historical appreciation, median income, and top 20% in the United States for one-year forecasted appreciation. Median home price clocks in at about 500,000. The average cost per square foot, 266. Then we're gonna share the historical and forecasted rates of appreciation. And then we're gonna share with them, you know, possibly for the first time ever, the opportunity that exists in home ownership. We're gonna share with them that five-year appreciation gain. And you can customize this, you know. Maybe they're looking at a home that's more in the 650 range, but they don't have a set home yet, so you didn't go put in the MLS. And maybe we want to focus more so on historical because we're a little dicey about where the market's headed. So maybe we just want to plug in historical. Maybe it has a little bit more pull right now. We can go ahead and we can completely customize this. Now, inventory is kind of tight there. There's six homes for sale for every thousand people. The largest demographic here is people within that age range of 55 to 64. So, you know, maybe their kids are moving out of the house and they want to downsize or whatever the case may be. We're going to share the total population. Of that total population, this is how many are currently renting. And of those renting, there's about 13,000 of them that are currently renting but could afford to purchase. And then we share a little bit about supply and demand. So this is annual household formations. Those are individuals within that age range of 27 to 35 that are looking to either purchase or rent a home. Now we know in El Dorado County that there's a 72% home ownership rate. So in order to meet you know, this demand, this is how many homes need to be built annually. And currently there's about 750 homes being built annually. So this is a really great piece for that real estate agent to have because maybe they've taken them out house hunting or virtual house hunting in this case, and they haven't been able to find a home that matches all of their needs, especially maybe it's a first time home buyer more so in that age range of 27 to 35. Well, this is a great piece for them to have because they can show them, you know, look, this is why it's so hard to find that newly renovated open concept that you're looking for but we did find that one that had the open concept, it just didn't have the brand new appliances. But listen, our appreciation levels are so great here right now. I honestly think that we should move forward with purchasing that home and a few years down the road, I mean, you can remodel that exactly how you want to. And now is a great time really to buy because there's, it's slowed down a little bit. There's not gonna be as many competing offers out there. And you might have a little bit more room for negotiation right now. So. Let's move forward with this.
We're going to share with them that employment picture, which is great. Uh, your income, median income is higher than the national average and your affordability has actually been increasing since 2018. So this is a really great piece. And I know someone mentioned other languages and I know you talked about Chinese, so I apologize, but on a lot of these, you can export in Spanish as well. So do keep that in mind. And that's the real estate report card. Another fun one is the community report that kind of breaks down the labor force, student to teacher ratio, the crime rates, uh, when homes were built in that county. So keep that in mind, keep exploring these tools in here. I know that we've gone over on this call, so I don't wanna go over. I do wanna to touch just on a few things under the marketing tab though. We have Presentation Expressway. This is pre-created PowerPoint slides and coaching videos. What I recommend right now, because you might not be able to host that lunch and learn at your office, is take one of these. You know, maybe you wanna land new referral partnerships right now, but that coffee date is really out of the question. Well, why don't you start a Facebook group, invite referral partners in it, potential referral partners in your area and host a class where you're saying, hey, I know times have changed. I'm gonna host a class this time just for you guys talking about getting started with Facebook advertising. You download the slides, they open up in PowerPoint, you can edit them, and then there's a coaching video that goes along with it that you can watch to feel comfortable and then you can go out and you can present it. So keep that in mind as well. Realtor marketing, this is essentially canned emails that kind of let your referral partners know about the tools that you have access to. We also put on a bi-weekly webinar for them and it's a shorter 30 minute webinar where we focus on overcoming challenges in their market by utilizing the tools of MBS Highway. And then we let them know that they can co-brand with you on all of them and to reach out to you for ones that they need. This marketing kit is a nine piece email campaign to keep prequels engaged. And there's one piece in here that I do want to kind of just touch on. So you can send these out in different intervals, but this is what I kind of wanted to focus on here is people are really worried about a recession. And really it's because they're thinking about the last recession, but we don't really have any of the same, it's not the same environment. Back in the last recession, we had an overabundance of homes on the market and not enough demand. And that is completely not the case in this scenario. And people are worried about purchasing a home right now or selling, but they really don't need to be. When you look at this chart, the gray bars show the past recessions. This blue line is home prices according to Case Schiller. And it's really interesting when you get in and look at this because home prices during every single recession, they either went up or they stayed stagnant. You know, they stayed about the same, they went up, they, stayed, they went up in this one. And it's really only the last one that people get confused. But again, it was a different scenario there. And it was really the housing bubble that led us into the recession, not vice versa. We had too many homes on the market, not enough demand. And of course, home prices had to come down. But that is not the case. In this one, this graph really shows us that that's not going to be the case when we look at history. When we're looking at this chart, each of these bars represents represents the number of births dating back to 1928. So you see the different generations here. We see baby boomers, Generation X, millennials. And according to Zillow, the average age of a first time home buyer is 33 years. So if we scoop up all the 33 year olds today and go back 33 years, they land right here on the chart. And look at this, after that, the number of births keeps increasing and increasing just like a staircase, meaning there's gonna be greater demand coming into the market of people that either need to purchase or rent a home. And it doesn't drop off either. It stays at these high levels of 4 million births per year. And if we take a look during the time of the recession, 2006, 2007, 2008, we took the average age of a first time home buyer in 2006, 33 years, go back 33 years. Those 33 year olds in 2006, they land right here at 1973. Does anyone know what major law was passed in 1973? Roe v. Wade, abortion became legalized. And we see a lull in the birth rates. Here, builders back in 2006 were just slapping up homes. But if they would have gone back and looked at demographics, they would have seen 
No one knew was going to be able to come into the market to purchase all the homes that they were putting up. And this chart really kind of solidifies that by showing supply and demand all the way back in 2002. The blue bar represents household formations. That's kids moving out of the house or a couple, they get divorced, they now need two roofs over their head instead of one. Where this orange bar represents household completions. That's builders putting homes on the market. And again, we see for the past five years that demand has outweighed supply. And you guys know, I don't have to tell you how tight inventory is in your area. And it's going to continue to be tight based off the fact that birth rates are continuing to increase. There's going to be more demand coming into the market. So anyone that is terrified right now of purchasing a home or whatever the case may be, home prices are gonna to continue to remain strong and appreciation levels are gonna to continue to re remain strong when we just go back and we look at history. So I'm gonna check the chat box here. If you guys have questions, now is the time to ask them. So a tutorial video, yes. So as you're exploring these tools, this is the most important thing I'm gonna to say today. So listen up, stop checking your emails, pay attention. We have a dynamic help feature. So no matter what tool you go to, if you click this blue question mark, a how-to video will pop up walking you through that tool or feature. Now, another thing to take note here, we do have weekly webinars. So you can go ahead, you can sign up for one of these. It's 90 minutes long. And that's where you can sign up for one. And I just recommend that you join those all the time because we'll cover what's new. Um, so those are two ways for you guys to get help on this. And again, you can reach out to me. I'll put my email in the chat box for everyone. If you signed up for a trial and you have not received your username and password, please shoot me over an email. And I will post the link one more time for you guys that want to get signed up on a trial and haven't yet. So those are two different links. And then I'm also gonna post my phone number. Now, just to recap the rest of the marketing tab, we have a weekly newsletter you can send out. Open house flyers. This is a three page open house flyer you can create. You can pull in the loan compare, the cost of waiting, appreciation. It shares you know, where are the restaurants, the fun places. Now I know open houses are not happening right now. So what I'm encouraging everyone to do is sit down with your referral partners and say, hey, you know, let's go Facebook Live and do Facebook Live house tours. And you can export these as that interactive link. So on that video, you can go ahead and post that so that they can get more information about the community, et cetera, et cetera. So you can still use these open house flyers even though people are not going out right now to open houses. So that kind of summarizes everything MBS Highway. I just wanna recap the tools that I think are the most important right now during this pandemic. And that's the screen share, screen record to maintain that you know personal trust level. Social studio, make your job easier, record a video, get it out on social media so you don't have to have those hundreds of 15, 10 minute phone calls to explain what certain things are meaning that are happening in the market. Debt consolidation to help with that cash out refi, consolidate debts, and the morning update video. So thank you guys for joining on. And again, if you have questions, I will stay on here for a second. You can unmute yourself as well. And I will be sure to send the recording once it is done to Audrey and all the important links. And just so you guys know, you get a really great discount that we've put together here. Thanks, Randy. Thank you, Lisa. All right, I don't see any questions coming in. So thank you guys, you have my email. I'll make sure that Audrey sends out my contact information and I hope you guys have a great Monday 
and I'll chat with you soon. Bye. Oh, yes, I'll go over the pricing here. So just to kind of share with you guys what it is normally, normally if a loan officer was just coming in to sign up, this is what they'd be looking at monthly or this is what they'd be looking at annually. You guys essentially get this cut in half. So you're gonna be looking at your monthly cost being $99 a month or your annual cost being $9.99. So you get really great price on this. And I'll make sure to recap that in the email as well so that you guys get that posted. On the real estate report card, is there any way to get zip code info instead of county? Yes, Greg, we just got zip code info. So let me log back in here and just kind of show you how to do it. So you just go to real estate report card and if it defaults to the classic drop down, all you're going to do is click smart search. And then from here, you just go ahead and you plug in the zip code and it'll pull it up for that zip code. So I think the zip code that I used, I don't want to use Wyoming here. That's the, that's where I grew up, but who knows what data there is for, for little old Wyoming. So you go ahead and you'll know that it pulls by zip code because it'll show it right here. So let me get back to the questions here. Yeah, it is exciting, Greg. I'm excited because a lot of you in California, like if you're in LA, I mean, you need to have it by zip code, not county. So um, what do you want to know about income properties? Yes, Greg. I'm so happy that you like that. I was so excited for that. Um, Paul, yes, but I don't know if I fully understand what you're asking. So if you want to send me an email asking exactly what you're looking for to show, let me know. But yes, the real estate report card. Oh, any product for marketing to commercial realtors? I will say that our platform is mostly for residential, um, but as far as, you know, I still think a lot of the same things kind of apply. The health of the housing market, the neighboring communities and things like that. So definitely get in and play around with that. The appreciation I think would be great in that sense. So that just kind of shows that appreciation a little bit longer term. And there's certain things and aspects that you could pull that would just be good to know as well, as far as, you know, median income, forecasted appreciation, things like that. But it's definitely tailored more towards residential. All right, you guys, thank you. If you have any further questions, feel free to email me or reach out to me. And I hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye. Oh, there is another, sorry, there's one more question. Um, I'm gonna ask you to send me an email, Luz. Since you're on this webinar, I will let it slide. But shoot me over an email and we'll, we will discuss, my friend. Matthew, thank you. It is great. And I, we covered a lot today. So honestly, every time I do a demo, people get a little overwhelmed because there's so much in here. What I would recommend is just picking, like you saw me walk over some tools and the minute you saw a tool where you were like, oh, I wish I had that last week or one where you're like, man, that saves me so much time versus that Excel sheet that I'm generating. 
I would focus on those. Our platform is very easy to use. And I think that you'll be surprised once you get in there about how easy it is to use and create these pieces and how it'll actually save you time in the long run. I do have people that they do have an assistant that will get in and kind of create the pieces for them or do, you know, the, the automated posts on social media or whatever the case may be. But I think you'll be pretty surprised when you get in there and start learning it how easy and fast it is and how it saves you time in a lot of areas. Because Barry was a loan originator before he started doing all this and he really made it, he wanted it to work within how you do business. So I think you'll be pleasantly surprised, my friend. But thank you all, have a good day.